Hey guys, I'm here to talk about high dynamic range today. Let's see how this video works. I'm out here in the Northgate parking lot. You can see my kids over there on top of the car trying to be distracted for a little bit. And we're hopefully going to shoot a panorama. Now, first off, let's talk about location. I have a big bright sun and a wide open space. This is the ideal for this uh, because usually you're using this to shoot environment. Now on my camera, if you're on scene mode, there is a method called HDR backlight control and this will automatically make an HDR. If I did an H, uh, a photo right now, you'll notice that it takes three photos and then it's going to slow down while it tries to process that inside the camera. Now, uh, we want to use the more advanced method of doing this, which is shooting it in manual mode. So I'm going to switch this to manual. And uh, in my settings, I'm going to flip my camera upwards for just a moment so that we can see this better. You'll notice that I have some certain settings here. I hope you guys can see it. I can barely see it. Anyways, my uh, shutter speed is currently at... Um, First off, f-stop, I'm putting at my um, biggest f-stop, in other words, the darkest possible f-stop with the most possible um, depth of field. Okay, you have to unlock the car. Okay. Alright, I'm unlocking the car. Next up, uh, my ISO is at 100. I turn everything auto off, so my uh, focus is on manual, on my lens, and I'm focusing as far off in the distance as possible. And I've chosen a white balance that is um, locked and set to my scenario. The sun keeps going in and out of uh, focus. Let's talk about what that means. Well, what does high dynamic range mean? Well, the high part of it means uh, the ratio of the lights and darks. Now you'll notice that we just went from a bright sun to an overcast day. And if you look down at your tripod, you'll notice that a lot of uh, shadows suddenly disappeared because we're getting diffused light. In other words, the ratio of light is no longer a high range scenario. The light over there is uh, kind of washed out, the light over here is kind of washed out. In other words, the skylight versus the sunlight is now a high range scenario, or a low range scenario. Now, that oftentimes means you can get by with just one camera raw file. Um, but if I was in here, for instance, this is the parking lot, and now I have what could be called a high range scenario because over here the sky is now so much stronger than even these interior lights. I don't have the best camera phone uh, so a lot of these are getting blown out. So maybe in this scenario I would come inside and shoot. Now dynamic refers to a couple of things. Uh, we're going to save this in the second part of this process as one super photo that actually contains the ability to move the exposure up and down just like we could here in real life. And that's going to be real cool. Uh, so a lot of times people incorrectly use a tone mapped image to refer to an HDR image. Oh, I didn't? How about now? Go try again. So dynamic refers to the idea that we're going to save this in a file that actively lets us change our settings in post. Now a camera raw file, when you bring it in to see our uh, camera raw, you can usually modify that a little bit. In other words, camera raw by default has its own certain amount of high range or dynamic range. And then range is the idea that it's uh, the brightest bright versus the darkest dark. So in nice settings here, I've changed a couple of things. First off, I'm shooting in raw. I've changed my drive mode to two second timer. Uh, I'm not really using any metering, but I want anything automatic off. So I want my ISO to not be on automatic. The reason is that we have a very different scenario here from over here. This is very bright and pointed directly at the sun. Over here is very, is slightly darker and it's gonna change those automatic settings when you turn the camera. What we need is the settings to be the same from every, for every photo in this circle. Oh, one second, I gotta close my trunk. Here it comes. This is the last playground allowed. 
What a strange time to be a parent. What a strange time to be a kid, huh? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of important that uh, I don't know. I think there's some sort of sociological or historical value to any any content you're making right now, guys. These are probably some of the most important photos you'll ever take, even if you don't feel that way. So, having done that, the last setting I do is this one here, which is I go over to this little bracket thing. And I'm going to increase or decrease this with the click wheel. This is Canon, of course. If you have a different model besides Canon, you might have to change this. And a lot of older cameras have different ways of doing this. But uh, So I'm changing that so that my settings are now going to shoot something that is a combination of the... It's going to shoot multiple shots. The first is going to be this middle one at zero, and that's going to use these settings I've chosen. It's then going to go three exposure values up. In other words, it's going to take this 250th and go and times it by two, so we'd go to 125th, 64th, 30th seconds, uh, 130th of a second, and then it's going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So for this minus three, it's going to go three steps darker. So it's going to go to 500, 1000, 2000. Those are going to give me three photos, which later get combined into one super photo. No honking! Actually, whatever. Do all the honking you want. Oh, what a joy to be a child and allowed to honk. All right, so I think this is all set. You know, the other thing is you have to move quick because these clouds are moving quick. And whenever they block the sun, we have a different lighting scenario that's not going to match if we shot over here and over here. So I'll just shoot one test one. And you can see that three clicks. Takes a while to write these. So here's the first one, which is, uh, or this is the middle one. This is one that's uh, three steps darker, and here's one that's three steps lighter. And these three photos are gonna composite together later in, our, in a separate 3D, in a separate program on a computer. So now let's talk about the panorama side of these uh, experiences. I'm gonna rotate my camera 90 degrees and lock this tripod. I want this so that I can rotate this around but otherwise have it stable. Well, Still there? Oh well, yeah. Okay, so I've got this rotated so that I can go around. And you'll notice that I've changed this to be uh, sideways. I've also zoomed out as much as possible. I want to maximize my environment. In fact, normally when I shoot this, I wouldn't be using this lens. I would be using my fisheye lens, which would let me shoot this in four angles and be done with it. So I'm gonna start, I don't really like that post being my center point, but I do like some sort of mnemonic, such as the sun is my zero degree mark, and then I rotate around like this. And I'm gonna try and look for any photo where it has some sort of half, like one third mark. So you'll notice I have this one third grid. I hope you can see it. And that's gonna give me little landmarks. I can also just look through the viewfinder, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna try and pick something that's at the one-third mark. So like if I had it like this, what would you say is the one-third mark? It might be that uh, phone, that light post, it might be something else. Let me make sure this is rotating easily. And now, I'm gonna take the first shot. So this is uh, the start of the HDR. And we're going with this overcast scenario. And now I'm going to rotate so that the one-third mark on my right is now on my left. In other words, those two photos will have some sort of stitching combination that still is in the works. You can also do this as just a series of uh, smaller increments, but you generally want to be able to have your photos line up. 
Now I'm doing this as a cylinder panorama to start with. In other words, I'm just going around like this. And what's funny is you can do these automatically on your phone probably. And to some extent, those can be a lot more quick and dirty and engaging. It makes you wonder why go through all the work of shooting this. Well, a really well shot, put together HDR panorama is something that, number one, is very manipulatable, manipulatable in post, but it's also a very key ingredient in a lot of 3D stuff. So I enjoy it for that sense. I'm going to shoot this starting cylinder and then I'm going to try for a spherical panorama, which means I also have to combine that with a cylinder above and a cylinder below. Again, those clouds are threatening me. At any given moment, they might stop covering the sun and suddenly my lighting scenario will change. So I have to do this very, very quickly. Another thing that I've done in the past is you can get applications that hack your camera firmware. I use something called DSLR controller plus a little USB-C to mini USB, which lets you uh, shoot many, many, many more brackets than you normally would. So you could change it so that you shoot uh, instead of uh, three brackets, which is actually not very many, I can shoot the entirety of possible ranges. I can go from one four thousandth of a second, the darkest my camera can ever achieve, all the way up to uh, one, one second long. Look at him, he's just honking the horn. She's just climbing on the back. Good for that. And now we're almost back to the center. It's still overcast, that's what I need. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to look at this and try and find something that is one third on the up or down level. I want to get the sky covered first. So I'm going to go up until I can just barely make sure that my horizon is touching here. So if the horizon's in the shot, then I know I'll have something to stitch to. And now I'm rotating it like this. And now I'm going to take this cylinder. And you know what? If you have a viewfinder that switches out, you can do this, but sometimes I'll just eyeball it. You know, life is short. I can't make sure every single thing lines up. And speed is of the essence, so if it's faster to just do something like this, then let's do that. You might notice something when you're shooting this, which is your camera can't keep up with you. That is probably an issue with your memory card. So if your memory card is too slow, you're going to start having a problem, which is that the memory card can't write the data from these photos to the camera fast enough. So whenever you're buying a memory card, my purchasing recommendation is uh, don't worry about storage, worry about speed. So get the fastest category of speed you can in your memory card. This also matters if you ever try to shoot video. So if you just have an SD card lying around and you think all SD cards are created equally, a lot of times what you'll find is you put them in and you try to shoot video and you can shoot about 10 seconds of video before it poops and dies. All right, I think we're gonna keep this overcast lighting scenario the whole time, which is good. Of course, if it's overcast enough, a single raw photo might uh, suffice. Maybe I don't need this HDR stuff. I'm not even looking right now, I'm just assuming that I'm making movements tiny enough that they'll stitch. Let's hope. In the past I've used things like putting uh, degree markers around the base and just trying to automatically assume that, you know, maybe I don't check that my alignment is working and I instead just rely on the idea that I'm moving 15 degrees every time. Again, this is a uh, 24 to 70 millimeter lens and I've changed it to be 
the maximum lowest millimeter. In other words, 24 millimeter. Uh, I would recommend something if you're purchasing for an HDR lifestyle uh, to get either a eight millimeter fisheye lens, which is really cool. By the way, right now I'm doing the same thing. I'm going down low enough, but I want to make sure that my horizon is, I don't know if I can just point this directly into the viewfinder, that'd be cool. I'm trying to make sure that the horizon is still visible. And that'll give me something to attack uh, this with. So now I'm going to do the lower cylinder. Those kids are having so much fun honking the horn. You know, you work with what you got. Letting them climb on the car is pretty much the only playground equipment they're allowed to use in COVID in quarantine. Everything else is considered touched by other people. I don't want other people to know about Northgate because although I stole the idea from a friend, it's turned into like my spot. It's just empty wide open spaces we can walk around. We can drive out to the country for these. Uh, quarantine is actually great for HDR panoramas because there's no people getting in your shots anymore. Normally this parking lot would have people walking around messing things up. It's kind of sad that we don't have that as a society anymore, but on the other hand, like, wow, what a weird, what a weird time. Now, what are the other factors that mess up an HDR panorama? Uh, things like birds, things like bikes, things like uh, cars driving by, things like pedestrians walking in front of you. A lot of times what you can do is shoot more than you need and you can use a sifting, a sorting algorithm called median, where uh, it'll take three photos, and if two out of the three have no people in it, because the guy was only walking by for one frame, it'll remove him based on the images that most align. So, in other words, shoot it multiple times and just use the best ones. We're about halfway done with the lower cylinder. So a lot of this doesn't make sense yet, but it will. No, the no, 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 you're in the shot. Go that way. That's all right if she's in the shot. She's been in the shot since she was a baby. Susan, come behind the camera, behind the camera. Over here, you can film me. Oh, don't touch the tripod. When Susan was, when Susan was two years old, I would let her be my helper and I would use my phone attached to a dongle cord and I would let her be the person who pushed the button. What are you going for? My keys? Do you need me to unlock the door? No, I want to. No, because then you guys could lock me out. Here, I'll unlock it when you're over there. Almost done. The sun's coming out. I gotta hurry. It's my last chance for this overcast sky. And done. So that's an HDR panorama. You uh, can turn in a panorama and an HDR for this week. Or you can turn in an HDR panorama and that's like the only photo you need. But it's gonna be super hard to put together. Uh, we're gonna try another one over there I think and this time we're gonna use our fisheye lens. <laughs> 